Update required is brought to you this week by Ad Revenue. Ad Revenue! It allows me to keep doing this show every week. This is the update for July 20th, 2014. Update required. Now, some of you may be thinking that that opening was a bit strange, and indeed it was, but it completely ties into our first story, as a group of YouTubers known as the Yogscast has made some interesting headlines this week. The cast has created a system they call Yogg's Discovery, a system that allows developers to cut the cast in on revenue share from any game that they cover if the developer of that game agrees to it. How this would work is for a game developer to send their game to Yogg's Cast, Yogg's Cast to make a video of the game and upload it to YouTube, then the sales after a period of time would be compared to the sales before that particular video went up. And if there was an increase in sales, Yogg's Cast would then get paid part of the difference, with the thought that the increase in sales would be due to the video for the game. If that sounds a bit fishy to you, you really aren't alone, as many people across the internet have been debating on whether or not something like this is a good or bad thing. In Yogg's Cast's defense, they say that a program like this removes any risk of lost ad revenue by making a video of an unpopular game, instead of something like Minecraft or Gary's Mod, games where they can almost guarantee will bring in the views and the ad revenue. This also allows them to have an additional budget that they can use to spend on better equipment and helps the game developer by giving them more eyes on the game in question. This kind of thing isn't really all that new, however, but this is one of the very few times this actually been brought to the light first, instead of someone uncovering it happening later after the fact and after everyone's already been paid. Yogg's Cast does make an interesting defense, for the most part, but it really doesn't hold up in my opinion. After checking out the different shows on the Yogg's Cast website, all but two of them are just people playing a game when recording themselves talking over it. From my own experience, commentary videos like that take very little time and effort to make, render, and upload. And the only extra cost you have in equipment is a decent microphone, which they already have for the videos that they have already been making. The main problem I have with a system like this, though, is the fact that they say that everybody wins. But in reality, they're the only ones who really win. Developers who choose to use this system lose out on money they earned from making the game in the first place. Plus the fact that it's very difficult to actually track whether or not the increase in sales would be directly connected to one particular person's YouTube video. What a system like this really does is it creates a divide between games that use it and games that don't. Not every developer will be willing or even able to partake in this kind of a system. And while Yogg'scast still says that anyone who's part of Yogg'scast is completely free to make videos of anything that they want, you can almost guarantee that they will focus on the games that they would get a revenue share from before anything else. Even if the Yogg'scast were able to keep things as fair as they possibly could, this kind of a thing really does set up a big problem for the rest of the gaming YouTube scene, as there are people out there who would abuse this system like this as there are always people out there who abuse systems just because they can. The last thing anyone would want is for something like this to become the norm, and developers who can't give up the rev share to have their games covered getting left in the dark. Please let me know what your own thoughts and feelings are about this in the comments section. Speaking of money though, Activision is getting sued. Ex-dictator Manuel Noriega is suing the game's publisher for both lost profits and damages. Noriega, who is currently serving a prison sentence in Panama after serving one in both France and the United States, was depicted in both name and likeness in Call of Duty Black Ops 2, a depiction that was used without the real world Noriega's permission. In Call of Duty Black Ops 2, a game that raised over $1 billion in just 15 days of its release, the ex-dictator was originally a friend of the US and the main character before betraying them and joining the game's main villain. The lawsuit states that the game portrayed Noriega having committed many fictitious crimes and depicts him as a kidnapper, murderer, and enemy of the state, and that Activision only used his likeness to heighten realism so that they could increase sales. 
sales. Between 1983 and 1989, Manuel Noriega controlled the military dictatorship in Panama and was an informant for the CIA before the U.S. invasion where he was inducted on charges of drug trafficking and racketeering. While the Call of Duty series has used the likenesses of real people in the past, such as John F. Kennedy and Fidel Castro, they usually make up some kind of fictitious character or group of characters that are somewhat similar to the real-world counterparts, similar to Al-Assad in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Characters that aren't exactly the same to who they depict, and this might be a practice that Activision goes back to after this kind of a lawsuit. After last week's news of Microsoft's hirings, this week we have the exact opposite news, as Microsoft has planned to cut up to 18,000 jobs. This, according to GameSpot, is the largest cut in the company's history, and will be reducing the size of the company by 14%. That's a lot of layoffs. Most of these layoffs are coming from the newly acquired Nokia division of Microsoft that they've only had for about a year, where 12,500 professional and factory workers will be notified within the next six months if they still have a job. These layoffs were addressed in a memo by CEO Satya Nadella that also states that the company will be adding some jobs in other specific areas. Even though these layoffs mostly take place in the Nokia division, they will affect things like the Xbox, mainly with the closure of Xbox Home Entertainment Studios, the part of Xbox responsible for making original video programming, but they do state that projects like Halo Nightfall and the Halo TV series will continue on as planned, as well as the documentary Signal to Noise, the same documentary that found all of those buried Atari ET cartridges in New Mexico. This could be a big turnaround for the Xbox in general, as we saw Microsoft's focus move from TV back to games in this year's E3, as opposed to the previous year's big push for the Xbox One to be an all-in-one media device. On a more serious note though, that is a lot of jobs, and all of us here at Update Required, basically me because I'm the only one who does this show, wish the best of luck to anyone who may be affected by these layoffs. Marvel surprised comic fans this week with the announcement of Avengers Now, a new upcoming series that aims to diversify the Marvel Universe. This new series consists of three big changes for some of our longtime favorite heroes, such as a female Thor, a African-American Captain America, and a new suit for Iron Man, as well as bringing more prominent roles for characters like Inferno and Medusa. Out of all of these changes, though, the two that have really stood out on the internet this week were the changes to Thor and Captain America. Marvel Editor-in-Chief Axel Alonso said that Marvel perceived there to be a real thirst for characters that reflect what we see in the mirror, and our goal is to make characters reflect the outside world. While the changes came as a bit of a surprise for both longtime and new fans, many are unhappy not just with the changes to their favorite characters, but how Marvel is using them for diversity. Parts of the backgrounds for both the new Thor and Captain America reveal that they aren't the same character, but instead replacements that will fill those characters' roles. It was revealed that for Captain America, Steve Rogers will no longer physically be up to the task of being Captain America, but will instead become a trainer for Sam Wilson who will take over the position. Although Wilson has already existed in the Marvel Universe for many years as his own hero, the Falcon. When it comes to the new Thor, it was revealed that the current Thor will no longer be worthy of using his hammer, the hammer that contains all of his powers, and a new female character who is worthy will gain all of his powers and thus become Thor himself. The problem with this is the fact that neither of these are permanent characters, nor changes, as there have been multiple Captain Americas in the past with the job always defaulting back to Rogers. There have also been multiple characters who have welled the power of Thor, such as the Hulk and in a DC crossover even Wonder Woman. But no matter who else wields his power, Thor is always able to regain his worthiness and thus his powers, and become Thor again. This means that both changes are only temporary, and both replacements will have to live up to the previous versions of their roles. It is currently unknown how many of the Avengers Now characters will get their own series outside of Thor, Captain America, and the shiny new Iron Man. But some of the answers to Marvel's problems could already be solved using the characters in Avengers Now. Instead of changing characters that already exist, characters such as Medusa, Scarlet Witch, and the newcomer Angela could have gotten their own specific 
specific comics or relaunch of their comics if they already existed, or even making a new series focused on the Falcon himself instead of shoehorning him into Captain America. Instead, Marvel decided to put a band-aid on their lack of diversity, a problem that they themselves already know exists within their universe. Alright, let's head back to gaming, shall we, as we ponder over just how effective Steam's green light in early access programs really are. Cult of the Wind creator Alex Allen from developer North of Earth discussed with PC Gamer this week how his game ended up being pretty much dead on arrival after a very popular Greenlight campaign. It was a surprise when all of the hype amounted to nothing, especially considering my last game Omega Dawn had a very slow trickle release and little publicity yet saw considerably more success. Cult of the Wind is a multiplayer-only third-person shooter where players take on the roles of people pretending to be airplanes. Within 72 hours of the release of the game's Greenlight campaign, Cult of the Wind was well on its way to breaking in the top 5, and was, for a little while, the fastest-growing Greenlight campaign game of all time. It was then released to a short Early Access period with frequent updates. How then could it have such a hard time finding players? Indie multiplayer games seem to always have a tough time getting off the ground. I've seen this happen many times with games such as Dino D-Day and Nexus, but most of the faulting of these games were due to technical issues. By the time the technical problems were fixed and passed, players had already moved on to the next thing. But Cult of the Wind is different. I personally have never experienced any technical issues with the time that I've been able to play the game. It's actually a ton of fun! Priced at $14.99 though, it may be a little bit too expensive for a multiplayer only experience. Alan hasn't given up on the game yet and plans on lowering the game's price to about $10 in hopes of interesting more players. But this is far from the first time I've seen Greenlight fail to live up to its potential. The Steam community tends to already treat Greenlight as a bit of a joke by what seems like purposeful backings of horrible games. That's how we get things like Air Control actually being released on Steam. So it can be difficult to gauge what players' real interests actually are. All I can say though is that Cult of the Wind has a ridiculous concept and has been a lot of fun for the short times I've been able to actually find players to play with. I had hoped to be able to do a quick peek video on this game when it released, but I couldn't because there weren't enough people playing it. So check it out if you haven't yet. I want people to play against, come on! And now, some games that are currently on green light that I have voted for. Mad Bullets, a shooting gallery game in the vein of old light gun games. No idea how well it'll work on PC with a mouse instead of a light gun, but it still looks like a lot of fun. Lisa, a strange platform RPG set in a post-apocalyptic world where women no longer exist. Or do they? The main focus of Lisa is to force players to have to make lasting decisions that will affect them throughout the entirety of the game. Be it to take a beating to save one of your party members, or have a limb chopped off in a Yakuza-style apology. The choices that you make will stay with you. Ghost's Joy have games like Haunt the House and Wayward Manor left you wanting a more interesting haunting experience? Well, now you can have one by becoming a Ghost Lord and train your minions to possess different items to spread terror throughout the city. Gather resources like Fear Points and Plasma to upgrade your scaring abilities and make the living believe in the dead. And lastly, The World 2. A game with a giant mechanical dinosaur in it that I know nor care anything else about it outside of the awesome giant mechanical dinosaur. I want one. Tell me where I can get one! Please? It's awesome! This week's featured channel is... Tony Mo. I've known Tony a little bit since my short time with Pixbyte, and he always offers quality content. Focused more on making conversations than just commentary, Tony's got a wide range of content on his channel, such as first impressions, games he's been following through their development, as well as overviews of different parts of games like Arma 3 and Grid Autosport. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today, so be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I've got plenty of more on my channel for you to check out if you're interested. I've been Mega Pie Man, and you've just been updated. Update complete.